Bobo C. Tiberius is here. Good day, good friends. And we have a decent hand here with Black White Martyr Proc. I I don't like that we don't have Martyr or any ways to get Martyr, but we do have a ton of removal. And once we get that Black Source, we'll have access to a lot of good stuff here. So I'm going to keep it and, and hope for the best. I think this hand is just flat out better than going down to six. Our opponent did mold a six, so got that going for us. There are a lot of things this could be where this hand gets us going pretty easily. So we we are keeping it to see. They mold down, our opponent molds down to five. So very good for us so far. The only way a uh, mold of five is even, you know, it's still in the playable category. This could still just be Tron, and then they go and they keep a hand with Tron and a payoff piece, which, if it's anything else, a mold of five is, is pretty backbreaking for our opponent, especially since they're on the play instead of the draw. We accidentally have a stop set on their upkeep. Scalding Tarn for our opponent. to go get a Steam Vents, which gets shocked in for a Serum Visions. Very beautiful Serum Visions. So my instinct is that this is Storm, and if this is Storm, it's I can't imagine it's going to be too easy for them to go off through multiple pieces of removal for us. So we get a Sarah Ascendant. We won't play that right away, but see what our opponent has to offer here. Misty Rainforest into a stomping ground. So we have a uh, rug here with a Tarmogoyf. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Haven't seen just a, a rug mid-range deck in a while. Hmm. I'm going to hold on to this Winds of Abandon for now. And let them kind of do their damage. I will play Ghost Quarter just in case they have some sort of shenanigans that we have to Orzhov Charm. But I think the payoff could come from a lot easier if we hold up for a little bit and try to get to that Cleansing Nova to two for one them, three for one them type thing. Opponent is having no trouble hitting their lands, despite their mole. They get a basic island and go in for two. Thought scour themselves. I'm excited to see more of their deck. Stubborn Denial, Mishra's Bobble. This could, in theory, I guess, be four color shadow, but I don't. They would have gotten black by now. So maybe they're just trying to land some big stuff and then protect it with other stuff. I don't know. It's a it's an interesting deck so far. Now that they have a the Goyf being so large, I am going to make them start answering, start, you know, protecting it from, start protecting ourselves from damage. Next turn we can get Ranger and then use Ranger to get Martyr and Sarah. Crashing Foothills. So yeah, it, this just looks like a big creature deck here, which is very good for us. They do have some counter, but only Stubborn Denial we've seen so far. So 
So if they can't counter creatures, we don't particularly care. Let's go get... Yeah, Martyr and Sarah seems like the play here, since we don't have Heliod down yet. They tarfire a ranger of Eos. Which does make Tarmogoyf pretty terrifying. Perhaps should have gotten two martyrs here. Traverse the Uvenwald for our opponent. They do have Delirium, so no problem there with whatever they want to fetch. They get a Dreadhorde Arcanist and play it right away. So while they're tapped out, we are going to Wrath them. Unfortunately, we don't get to kill their... Um, we don't get to kill their Rhinos with this Wrath. Oh no, we didn't draw the land. Never mind. I'm a little bummed that we can't answer that Dread Horde right away. But we will get up to 30 life here. Actually, no, because they can tar fire before damage, so Tarmogoyf will have to come in. We will have to let Tarmogoyf in. If they choose to go that route. They do not choose to go that route. Traverse for what? Traverse for another Goyf. So we'll go to up to 30. Up to 31 and then down to 30 after Dreadhorde hits. And will they play that second Goyf? Draw a card off of Serum Visions. Bobble. And Goyf. And Goyf. Doesn't make a ton of sense actually to play Goyf, if I'm being honest. Because then they don't have mana to Stubborn Denial or Wrath spell. They go get a Bone Crusher Giant. That's that is a card. Weathered Wayfarer doesn't really do much of anything for us. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to See if they let us do this. We do get a Stubborn Denial off of them for that. So... Hmm. So if they tar fire me, that puts me down to 28. So yeah, let's make them react to this. Suspend. Uh, we've got one more turn to, to before those rhinos hit the battlefield. They start with stomp. And get me down to 28. Let's see if they use tar fire now. They don't use Tarfire here. We can block and then untap and crash into them for a lot. They target Serum Visions. Perhaps there's a Bolt about to hit one of my Sarah Ascendants? Or me? 
or perhaps they don't know that this will keep one of my Sarah ascendants alive. Bobble. Yeah, that works for me. And now we can swing in and cast a Ranger of Eos. To go get more Sarahs. Or if they have a way to stop this, get Martyr into Sarah. They do not have a way to stop this, so we'll go get some more Sarahs. I would have liked to draw in a black source by now. Let's actually get Sarah into Ballista. Since we have Soren eventually. Though I guess they can counter Soren. They vapor snag my Ranger of Eos. That seems like a mistake. I'll discard my Weathered Wayfarer. Even though it lets them get in now, like, that seems rough to let me dr get more cards off of Ranger of Eos. Plus, we will still eventually draw this Wrath spell. I guess what they'll do now is attack and then tar fire my Sarah. That makes sense in my head. But then we just get more martyrs and get it back. Hmm. Interesting thought. Oh, they vapor snag it. Okay. Yeah, sure. I love seeing them tap out and tap out to cast another creature because if we get mana here, it's over. Bummer. We do get mana, but it's not the mana we're looking for, unfortunately. So let's see here. How do we want to do this? Let's... Hmm. So... If we cast Ranger, we have to discard a bunch of stuff. We... Let's tap a white and Ghost Quarter our own land here. It's not the... It's kind of a bummer of a play, but we get Martyr back and gain a ton of life with this Orzhov charm, and then we have Black Mana to Soren. And we'll have to wait another turn to Wrath, which is unfortunate, but will live. I don't want to miss out on the chance to gain life. And then we'll play Sarah Sarah. Or just one Sarah, unfortunately. They do have a counter for that. All right. All right, all right. Hmm. So that changes things. Next turn we take 10, 21 damage. Uh, so let's block some of it with a Sarah Ascendant. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I'll play both. Just in case they have... A removal spell. They have access to removal with Dread Horde. I would love to see them cast another creature for our Wrath to hit. Teamer Ascendancy. Let's see if they have another stu Stubborn Denial next turn. Because we're just going to rinse and repeat next turn. They go get Crashing Foothills. 
That's that's spicy. That's super spicy. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. It's still pretty dead to a wrath, but let's see if they drew one of drew their last stub. They did not, because that Serum Vision tells me they did not. So all we have to do is draw a land, and this one is pretty much in pocket. If we don't draw a land, we're in a bit of trouble. Path is a card. So we stay alive with that, I think. Let's see. So next turn they can hit for 20, 28, 29. And we can gain life. Um, so let's... Orzhov Charm back Martyr. Or do we Orzhov Charm back Kami? Hmm. Let's see. Martyr gains us 12 life. And blocks. So... Yeah, no. I think we always off charm back Kami. And then we will path one of the creatures, I guess. long decision-making process for our opponent here, apparently. Misty Rainforest for our opponent. Opponent's life total is getting down pretty low here, which we like a lot. They choose to cast the Traverse. In hindsight, if I was going to path this turn, I should have pathed before attacks. But pathing Dreadhorde just feels kind of awful. So now we have two paths. So 17 damage if they let us path their creature. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to cast a Ballista here on one just to, just to block and try to stay alive. Not drawing lands has been very bad for us. We're drawing lands at a pretty slow rate. We've only seen five lands in, across ten draw steps. Really not where we want to be. They are able to stomp our Ballista. So we'll shock them for four. And then... From there... I guess doing this now makes just as much sense as doing it next turn. In hindsight, this is only game one. 
All right. If they're going to counter, they're going to counter, and we're dead. So let's hope they don't have the stub. But in addition to stub, they could have literally any counter here. Bone Crusher Giant for our opponent. They will draw a card off of that. And it has haste, so we're dead. That is that. We got off to a red hot start there and then just kind of lost it, unfortunately. Uh, Celestial Purge is very good here, I feel like. Do I bring in the Rest in Peace? Rest in Peace seems to stop their entire strategy. Um, yeah, I think I do. I think I do. I think Rest in Peace and Wrath are good enough for us. And we just take out the Soren, we take out the Crucible, and, um, yeah. And then from there, I guess also take out the Weathered Wayfarer, and then we have a very good, just tempo-y deck where neither of us are benefiting from our graveyard, and that hurts us way, 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 way more than it hurts them, I feel like. I like that. Uh, there's a part of me that likes Camball here, but then a part of me that doesn't. So let's see how it goes this game. This is another hand where I wish that Amiria was a swamp, but we'll keep it. Because it is likely they will do something next turn and then we just use Rest in Peace. Yeah, I guess in game three, there's a part of me that thinks cutting the Orzhov charms, two of the Orzhov charms for two of the Camballs, is pretty strong. And they start by suspending a Crashing Footfalls. And we will start with a rip. And from there, their Goifs are dead. They're, they can only cast the Crashing Footfalls once, so Dreadhorde is, is all but dead. They just lose a lot of value, and they're just a zoo deck at that point. Until they can answer this rest in peace. Tarn for our opponent. They exile, they suspend another Crashing Footfalls. And we do not draw lands as we were hoping here. So let's play a Sarah Ascendant in case we top deck a Martyr. Two turns until we have to f have an answer for that crashing footfalls. They do tar fire our Sarah Ascendant. Godless Shrine for us, which gives us access to Orzhov Charm. As well as gets us closer to Ranger. Our opponent is a little stuck on land. If they can stay that way where we stay in good shape. Another Orzhov charm for us. Just kind of dead cards here. Our lands haven't been coming through for us as much as we would hope here. You know, with 24 lands, we should be drawing them a lot more consistently than we are. Opponent thought scours us. Let's see what they see. 
A martyr in a ranger cap. So that gets us closer to lands, closer to the, uh, closer to lands, closer to, what's the word I'm looking for? Words are hard. Closer to, um, wrath spells. We do get a fourth land, so we can get, cast ranger here and get double martyr. Let's see if they brought in anything to counter creature spells. If they did, we're in trouble. They're debating it. They stomp our Ranger of Eos. And now they have more Rhinos. So, they'll get us down to 12 here. And suspend another Crashing Footfalls. Alright, so this gains us 21 life. And then we can play Sarah Sarah to block those rhinos. And they need a bolt to, to do anything. Season Pyromancer for our opponent. So they'll get to sight to rummage a little bit. What did they exile here? And they concede. They exiled a Goyf and a Surgical. So Rest in Peace ha ended up being very strong against them. And we're very happy about that. Uh, I am going to bring in the Camball here. And take out two of the ores off charms. I just think it's better. Um, other than that, I, I really like what we're doing here. That opener is... I mean, it's got four lands. Doesn't seem like they can counter stuff. We are on the draw. Uh, so close. So, 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 so close. But I think I would need, I would want to kill their graveyard with that hand to slow them down. Oh, what rough breaks. I guess we're on the draw. And we'll get rid of one of the rangers here, unfortunately. Maybe the winds of abandon was a better call since we have the wrath. Here's what we gotta do. We just gotta go turn one, draw land, turn two, draw land, turn three, draw land, and then this hand is fine. Our opponent bobbles and cracks a misty. And goes for a serum visions. Draws from Bobble. So far, so good. <laughs> That's the exact land we wanted at that moment. And another one. So now, next turn we can cast Campbell, which seems very, which does seem pretty good against them, if I'm being honest. We they get they lose one of their stubborn denials and a crashing footfalls. 
So we're pretty happy about that. They get a Goyf. Goyf is good. We're going to pass it, though. I don't even care that I'm giving them land. They have a Stubborn Denial for it. All right. We did exactly what we asked the deck to do, was to draw lands. So I'm liking that. I'm liking that quite a bit. We seem to be in really good shape here since we have access to the Wrath. They Vapor Snag, we gain some life off of that. And then they Thought Scour, looking for some some action. They will hit us for six here. So Next turn, I think we just go Ranger into Martyr Martyr. I just want to make sure I have enough life as they kind of really, really go for it here. We got to be careful about surgical extraction on our martyrs, but I'm pretty happy so far with how this one's going. Let's see if they have a, I don't know, stomp costs two mana. They would need a tar fire here, and there are three of those in the graveyard. They vapor snag it. What's the game plan here? Dude, they can't kill us this turn. Crashing footfalls. Will you get to put in an Amiria tapped? I'm going to activate that and then throw down another one. Or do I try to Winds of Abandon here? No, I think let's just gain a ton of life. Let's be up to 40 life and then be able to cast another Ranger and get more. That's especially potent if they Surgical it. Which they can't do, apparently. Copperline Gorge for our opponent. We get our sixth land, so now Winds of Abandon is active. Um, what I want to do here is I want to play Ranger Cap and Campbell. I think that's the better value than Ranger of Eos. Oopsie. And then next turn, we can get two white cards with – actually, let's just get Sarah sent it and start crashing in. In hindsight, that was probably the better play. I'm going to not activate Ranger here. I want them to cast spells. Field of Ruin for us. And we'll go Ranger 
and go get some more Sarahs. While also having removal. So we sealed it. it. That feels like we seal this one up pretty quickly here. I'm just going to dump my hand here. And... I guess it doesn't make a ton of sense to attack with Camball. They just get to block it. Crashing Footfalls for, come, gets closer and closer. I think it's one more counter. Yeah. So next turn they cast that. Camball activates on... Camball triggers on Mishra's Bobble. Gets him down to 10 and us up to 41. They crack it. Looking for an answer. And they concede. So... Good, 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 good stuff. I thought that matchup should be a lot, a lot better for us than for us than it was in game one. Uh, big ups to Rest in Peace, though. Big ups to Campbell, and uh, yeah, I I liked that a lot. And we'll see you in the next one.